Well, good evening, folks. Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Hopefully, we'll stay connected. We've had a little difficulty connecting on with the internet. Uh, tonight, we'll be looking at uh, John chapter 18, beginning with verse 28, going down through chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh, before we get into that, I want to mention one little housekeeping item. The church secretary is working from home, and so the church office is closed now. And so we will need to not order anything that will be delivered by UPS or FedEx to the church office because nobody uh, will be there to uh, receive the packages. Anyway, she wanted me to be sure and mention that. Let's pray. Father, open your word to us. Feed us from it. May we see Jesus and may we see him as the king of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, since Jesus and the disciples left the upper room at the end of chapter 17, we've had two uh, episodes already, little stories, uh, little scenes of Jesus that each one uh, gives a, has a particular theme. At Jesus' arrest, we saw his deity as he asked, Whom seek ye? And the crowd said, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am. Actually said it three times. They fell backward on the ground. Couldn't stand before the God-man. Uh, then at his interrogation by the high priest, Peter is denying Jesus uh, three different times. In between his denials, Jesus is being asked about his teachings and about his disciples. And uh, from Luke's gospel, if you may want to check it out from uh, Luke's uh, version of this, uh, Jesus and Peter could see each other. And, uh, but Peter's denying Jesus. Jesus is not telling anything about his disciples. The theme is faithfulness. And this that we're going to read tonight, uh, as Jesus is uh, tried before Pilate, and John makes a much bigger issue of the Roman trial before Pilate than the Synoptic Gospels do. In fact, uh, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the emphasis is on the trial and the interrogation by the religious leaders. Here, the emphasis and more, much more uh, text is devoted to Jesus being questioned and interrogated by Pilate. But <clears throat> the theme here is uh, Jesus the king. Kingship is the theme here. And notice as I read the text how often from the mouth of Pilate every time is king of the Jews or are you a king? Let's read verse 28. Then led they, notice led, they didn't drag him. Jesus a willing participant. It's part of a plan. Jesus is in control. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, or the praetorium, we could call it. <clears throat> and it was early. And they themselves, this is the priests, went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Now in John, the Passover is on a Friday night after Jesus crucified. It's not the Passover meal, the Last Supper, as it is in the Synoptic Gospels. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But they do not want to be defiled so they can't eat the Passover that night, which would be Friday night. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring you against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor or a criminal, we would not have delivered him unto them. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, back in chapter 12, verse 32 and 33, signifying what death he might die, he should die. Then Pilate <clears throat> entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews. Jesus answered him, do you say this thing of yourself or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? 
Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Thou sayest, uh, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, <clears throat> this is the first of three times he says this, I find in him no fault at all. Literally translated, it would be, I not one crime do find in him. <laughs> not one crime. I find in him no fault at all. But you have a custom, verse 39, that I should release unto you one at the Passover. <clears throat> Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? There's king again. They cry, and notice they're, they're very emotional. They Four times they'll cry out. They cry out, they all again say, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth or went out. If I get my page to turn. <laughs> Again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth unto you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Literally translated, uh, not one fault do I find in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priest, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out second time say, Crucify, crucify. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify, for I find no fault in him. Again, literally translated this time, for I not am not finding in him a crime. <laughs> the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought or is obligated to die because he made himself the Son of God. <clears throat> when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, From where art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? <clears throat> Knowest thou not that I have power, that is authority, to crucify thee and have power or authority to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power or authority at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out third time, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, that is, Passover would be that night, and about the sixth hour. <clears throat> and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out fourth time, <clears throat> Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. Well, a whole lot here. But did you catch all those times? King of the Jews. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you a king then? Uh, you said it. Jesus said my kingdom's not of this world. The whole issue here is kingship of Jesus. What kind of a king? Is he a king? And if so, what 
kind of king. The religious leaders have brought Jesus to Pilate uh, and a couple of reasons here. In fact, in the text, they claim that in verse 31 that it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. Uh, that Scholars are kind of divided over this because there's some evidence that uh, they still had the right to stone someone like they did Stephen not too long later. Uh, the point here is they don't just want Jesus to be dead. They want him crucified. They want to make an example of him. They want him to die slow, a slow, public, horrible, shameful death. Stoning is too quick, uh, even if they could do it, and it's debatable uh, whether when they did Stephen over in uh, Acts chapter 6, uh, or chapter 7, uh, whether that was a legal stoning or not. Uh, but they, they want Jesus crucified. Again, we're told that uh, uh, they came to Pilate and they said it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. In order that, the next verse, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying what death he should die. And that goes back to chapter 12, verses 32 and 33, where he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, signifying by what death he should die. And again, Jesus knew all along he'd be crucified. Uh, crucifixion was uh, reserved for uh, crimes, uh, people who were criminals against the state. Jesus hadn't done anything uh, directly against Rome. Uh, it's implied here that, and the other gospels uh, 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 have the religious leaders coming to Pilate saying that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. And that's implied here because Pilate picks right up on that. And when he asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, oh, did somebody tell you that? Or did you just come up with that on your own? Uh, and so obviously they have uh, communicated that to Pilate, thinking that that would carry weight and, and brand him as an insurrectionist. Well, as we begin to look at these verses, we see in verse 28 that they led Jesus from the, uh, the home of Caiaphas. And of course, Jesus is a willing participant. Jesus is the only one really who knows what's going on through all of this. Jesus is the one that's in charge. He was in charge at the arrest. He is in charge at his interrogation. Now he's going to be in charge when he has the conversation with Pilate. And so he goes willingly. They come to the praetorium, uh, the hall of judgment, which m probably was a complex that included the housing quarters of Pilate and perhaps uh, was connected to the Tower of Antonia. We're not really sure exactly where this was, but also uh, included a, a, uh, uh, a judgment hall. And, uh, but they will not go in, these religious leaders, because they don't want to come under the roof of a Gentile because tonight they'll be eating the Passover meal. They don't want to be ceremonially defiled. What hypocrisy. They don't worry about having the blood of an innocent man on their hands. Uh, they just don't want to go into the under the roof of a Gentile. So they stay outside. This that we've read contains seven scenes. Uh, first it's outside, then it's inside, then outside, inside, outside, inside, seven times. Uh, and there are exchanges between them and Pilate and between Pilate and Jesus and the scene shifts uh, seven times here. Scene number one, uh, you have the, the, the Jews come to make an accusation, but they don't really make one. <laughs> Verses 28 to 32. They won't go inside. They don't want to be defiled ceremonially because they want to eat the Passover that night. So then Pilate goes out to them and asks for their, what's the charge? And they say, if he wasn't a criminal, we wouldn't have brought him. In other words, we don't have a charge. We just want him put to death. We want him crucified. We want him killed. Uh, we don't have a charge. And then Pilate says, well, you take him and judge him according to your law. 
And the Jews says it's not lawful for us to put a man to death. Again, they've got in mind crucifying because, again, when Pilate brings him out, they're the ones saying crucify. Pilate never crucifies not on Pilate's lips till after they have required crucifixion. Again, <laughs> Pilate says, you take him. And they say, we can't put a man to death in their thinking crucifixion. And so uh, uh, Pilate takes, goes back into the judgment hall again. And so Jesus now and Pilate are inside. Scene number two is inside. Uh, and Pilate's interrogation of Jesus. Actually, it's Jesus interrogating Pilate just as much as it is Jesus. Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? <laughs> Obviously, in their conversation, that has come out as Pilate has pressed them for a charge. And... Uh, so he asks, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answers, did you say this of yourself? Or did others tell it to you of me? Are you a pawn of the priests of the Jews? Uh, are you doing their bidding? Are you complicit in their schemes? Uh, are you going to be manipulated by the religious establishment? And, of course, that probably stung Pilate just a little bit. And Pilate said, am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priest who handed you over to me. Tell me what you did then. <laughs> and Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. I am not an earthly king. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. Well, Peter sort of tried to, if you remember back at the arrest. Uh, <laughs> But uh, the rest of his uh, followers, they all scattered, you know. And uh, uh, so <laughs> he has not trained his, uh, an army. Uh, he has gathered some disciples to follow him. He says, but my kingdom is not from this, is not like the kingdoms of this world. Doesn't mean that his kingship does not have authority in this world, but it doesn't originate in this world. And it's not worldly in its nature. Uh, the world, uh, in fact, this is kind of part of what plays in the, in the conversation here. In this world, kings rule by might. In Christ's kingdom, he rules by truth. And Pilate, that whole concept of, of the real power is in truth is something that has escaped Pilate because he's a politician and he rules by might. The Roman legions secure might for Rome to rule all these colonies and all these uh, provinces that they conquered. Uh, but it's not about truth. In an eternal sense, truth will always prevail because truth is the only thing that's real. Truth is the only thing that lasts. Truth is the only thing in this life that we have uh, to do with that is eternal. Anything that's actually true is going to continue to be true. If it's true today, it'll be true tomorrow. If it was true today, it was true yesterday. If it was too true yesterday, it'll be true today and true tomorrow and true right on. If it's not true tomorrow, then it's not fully true today. And if it's not tr fully true today, it wasn't fully true yesterday. Truth is continuous. And truth is eternal. And Jesus says, my kingdom is about truth. Uh, and so Pilate says, so you are a king, verse 37. Jesus says, you say I'm a king, but this is the, the end of the purpose for which I was born and, and why I came into the world, to bear witness to the truth, which is eternal. And whoever is of the truth will hear or listen to my voice. And Pilate says, what well, is truth? Pilate, the whole concept of truth being the ultimate power and the ultimate reality, that escapes Pilate. He's never heard such a thing. Pilate comes from a worldview where there were many gods, many realities. We live in a pagan world today where in, in modern culture, the truth for you may be different than the truth for me in most people's worldview. But the fact is, there's only one truth. 
truth is singular and there's only one reality and <laughs> we'll all encounter it uh, when we stand before Almighty God. Well, Pilate says, what is truth? So then he goes back out. You have the third scene is back on the outside with the, with the, uh, the priests and the religious leaders. And so he goes out and he says, uh, I not one fault am finding in him. Not one crime, not one. In fact, three of the four times, uh, uh, two of the three times that Pilate says, I find no fault in him, Pilate says, not one. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that three times in the previous uh, episode, Peter denied that he knew Jesus, and here three times an unbeliever has to affirm that there's no crime, no fault in Jesus. Anyway. He says, uh, I, I, I'm not finding not one fault in him. He says, but y'all, and, and Pilate is looking for a way out of this now. And he says, you have a custom that I release unto you one uh, condemned criminal at Passover time. Uh, how about if I release to you the king of the Jews? Speaking of Jesus. <laughs> and they cried out, again, full of emotion, full of hate all stirred up. They cried out, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas is only mentioned here just in this one verse, verse 40. But it's interesting. The word Barabbas is uh, Aramaic. Bar means son of. Abbas means father, son of a father. Jesus Christ is the son of the father. There's also substantial manuscript evidence, particularly connected with Matthew's gospel. In fact, uh, turn over to Matthew right quick. Matthew 27, verses 16 and 17. I'll show you something. Matthew 27, verses 16 17. I should have my finger there already, but I didn't. Here we go. I'm getting close now. Matthew 27, 16 and 17. Uh... Verse 17 of Matthew 27. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom you, will you that I release unto you, Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? Uh, back to verse 16 of Matthew 27. They then had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. That's the way your King James Version reads. The best and the oldest New Testament manuscripts of Matthew read like this. They then had a notable prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called Christ? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> By the way, Jesus uh, is a Hellenized version of Joshua Jeshua, Hosea, Hashia, several variants in how it comes across in the English from the Old Testament. But the word Joshua and its variants means Jehovah is salvation. When it, it comes in the Greek as the word Jesus and uh, from Greek in the English as the word Jesus. Anyway, but there's Barabbas, Jesus, son of a father, and here's Jesus, the Christ. Not this man. Give us Barabbas. <clears throat> Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. That's 39 lashes with a cat of nine tails. Uh, an awful whip with nine straps that had bone and metal embedded into those leather straps. And it was so made that when, when they would hit you with it, it would wrap around your body. And when they'd pull it off, it would tear the flesh with it. And uh, uh, you wouldn't have hardly any skin left on your uh, torso after you had 39 lashes with that. Uh, you multiply 39 uh, times 9 because there were 9 straps. And that's a whole lot of stripes you'd have. Uh, Jesus died partly because they had beat him three quarters death 
to death before he was ever put on the cross. Well, the soldiers now, uh, it's scene four inside Roman humiliation. The soldiers torture him and humiliate him at the same time. Uh, they've scourged him. They put a plait a crown of thorns. These are not little blackberry briars. These are long thorns. And they put it down on his head. And of course, you don't have much cushion uh, and you bleed easily from your head. Lots of blood flowing out, I'm sure. Put a purple robe on him. <clears throat> and hail, king of the Jews. And they're hitting him with their hands. So then Pilate goes back out again. Uh, verse 4. And uh, to the religious leaders now, and you have the fifth scene. Uh, and he says, I'm bringing him so you can see him. And he's hoping that the sight of Jesus being beaten and being tortured and with the crown of thorns and the, and the uh, purple robe, that that will uh, appease them. And he comes forth wearing this, and Pilate says, look at the man. And uh, the chief priests uh, cry out again, crucify, crucify. First time they directly mention crucify. But that's what they want. They want him crucified, not just dead. They want him to suffer. They want him to be hung up as a spectacle. They want him crucified. Crucify, crucify. Pilate says, you take him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. There are three times. Not one fault have I found in him. And the Jews said, now, that, now comes the real issue. They finally come out with it. They're so emotional that it finally they let it out what it is that bothers them so much about Jesus. We have a law. By our law, he ought or is obligated to die because he made himself the son of God. And again, they never considered that he might actually be the son of God. They say he made himself the son of God. Pilate, having heard this, was the more afraid. Pilate has, uh, they're, they're all worked up, this mob out here outside and, and Jerusalem is full of people who've come for Passover. Pilate doesn't want any kind of a uprising during Passover time and he's been a little bit afraid and he's allowed the Jews to back him into a corner as it is and now he is sees that he's losing control of this situation. So he goes back into the judgment hall again, scene six inside and there's a re-examination. He interrogates Jesus again and says, where, from where are you? And Jesus now won't talk. And Pilate says, uh, don't, you're not going to speak to me? Uh, don't you know I have the authority to crucify you and the authority to release you? Uh, it's up to you, Jesus, uh, and I have the authority. And Jesus says, you wouldn't have any authority if it hadn't been given to you from above. And the ones that handed me over to you they are in a worse situation than you are. They, their sin is greater. Their accountability is greater. And so from then on, Pilate's trying to figure out how to, how to get out of this and how to let him go, but the Jews cry out. They're all emotional. If you let this man go, you're not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king is speaking against Caesar. And again, the Jews will have nothing but crucifixion. When he heard that saying, he brought Jesus out. He sat down in a place called the pavement where he would pronounce judgment. And it was the preparation of the Passover, that is, it's the day before. Passover will be that night. Uh, and about the sixth hour, about noon now. So he spent all morning back and forth, in and out, talking to the religious leaders, talking to Jesus, trying to work it out, has not been able to. And so he brings Jesus out and says, Behold your king. And they cry out again, Away with him, away with him, crucify, crucify. Pilate says, Shall I crucify your king? And they say, We have no king but Caesar. And so then he hands them over to them, and they take him to be crucified. Interestingly, the religious leaders of the Jews, the, the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, 
they have Jesus' blood on their hands because they brought him to Pilate requiring that he be crucified. On the other hand, Pilate and the world also has his blood on their hands because Pilate is complicit in the putting to death of Jesus. Everybody in the world bears responsibility for the death of Jesus because we as the human race put him to death. The one that God sent to pay for our sins was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, according to Isaiah 53. What a terrible thing. The real judgment is not against Jesus. The real judgment is against the religious establishment of the Jews. The real judgment is against the Roman government. The real judgment is against this world. Jesus dies, but Jesus will rise because truth is eternal. Father, thank you for your word and thank you that Jesus willingly lived out the plan that you had for him to come and suffer and die to pay for our sins. Thank you, Father, that you love us in spite of our rebellion and help us to see our need of a Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night.